Good evening, good evening once again. Welcome, welcome. Wow, what a full house. Welcome, everybody. And um, welcome to Saffron Seacap's weekly voiceover talk show. What a joy to be here again. My name is Giz Ojiako, and I am the um, director for programs for Saffron Seacap. And um, it's amazing to have you all on board and back again. Um, and just before we continue, I would love to introduce my colleagues who will be anchoring with me today for Saffron Seca. Um, first of all, I have Marcia. I'm gonna ask Marcia, if possible, to un unmute for and, and to say good evening. Good evening, everyone. I hope you can hear me clearly. I'm yeah. um, happy to be here again. So I missed last week, but I'm really excited about the follow-up today. And thank you again for your support and for being with us tonight on such a historic occasion for England. Enjoy tonight. Thank you, Marcia. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, a very historical day for England. Um, we will be closing early because I'm I do need to watch the match. But before that <laughs> happens, I'm going to hand over to my boss. Um, and I'm gonna ask her to unmute and please introduce herself. <laughs> oh, I can't stop laughing. Um, it is football night for so many people. Um, thank God it's England and thank uh, God no, we're go in ahead, Ireland yeah. this evening. So <laughs> thank God we're in Ireland and not England and not um in the in, in England tonight. Um I I just want to say welcome to everyone who's joined us this evening. Thank you for um honoring our invitations, thank you for allowing allowing us to um to come into your space um my name is yemi abulu yuntari and yes as Giz said i am the executive director for safra and seika and um we just started a really 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 great discussion last week and we're really excited to be continuing this tonight um so i just um say let's have a good evening Welcome to everybody who has joined us, especially um, our, our sisters, our brothers uh, from from Ireland, all over. We, uh, I believe, we have people from various um, what do you call what do you call them? counties? In in it's you call them counties? Yeah, yeah, we call it counties. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. From various counties in Ireland, so we're really looking forward to some really really important. Um, discussions but also important outcomes for for us all thank you um yeah awesome thank you so much um for that yemi and i want to say um first of all a welcome to all our facebook viewers those of you on oh, facebook yeah. i am very sure um our other director deborah deborah should be um on facebook to take your questions and statements and also yemi is on standby to take your questions um, and anything that you have to say on Facebook will be transmitted to myself um, on Zoom um, for us to address. So once again, we would love to say a humongous welcome to the 4Gs, Kings and Queens. You guys are awesome. I mean, absolutely awesome. I'm on your page. Your page gives me life. I, I can't, I don't even know where to start. Omoti, 
and your, your, your kings and queens, welcome, welcome, welcome. Last week we had you guys on and it was such an amazing, amazing interactive session. We, you know, we came away very, very wise from just, you know, um, um, you know, discussing, exchanging, you know, experiences, ideas and views. Um, and I'm hoping we can do the same again today. Um, and, you know, we, we, what did we say? We said um, there were quite a few people spoke last week. Um, I can't even remember all of you, but I do know that Fumilayo, Meyanda, Josephine, Obide, Wuraula, Opeyemi, please, if I'm saying the names wrong, please excuse me. My Yoruba tongue, I need to reset it as an Igbo girl, but I'm getting there. So for all of you that I've mentioned your names, thank you so much for coming on last week and adding, you know, to, to the discussion. And this week we wanted to continue it, um, talking about the social issues. But what did come up for us a lot last week with the discussions was the, the necessity for for, 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 for the, 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 the African community in Ireland to come together as one. Um, that came out a lot in all the discussions. There was a lot of that that came out. Um, and I'd like to say a welcome to all, anybody that, um, anybody that um, has come on for the first time today from the 4Gs Kings and Queens, um, you are welcome. And we hope that as you've come on today, you know, you will still, um, um, come on. So I'm going to ask Omoti, um, obviously, because it's, it's, it, these are your people. I'm going to ask Omoti to please um, come in now and, and introduce your, your family to us. You know, I, I did say last week that once you come on to Saffron, you know, we are a family mm -hmm. and anybody we open our doors to, you become family. We don't let you, you know, we don't let you go mm -hmm. away. So Omoti, um, over to you. Um, are you there? I'm not seeing you on my screen. Yes, you are. Okay. I can okay, see can you. you see go me ahead. Now? Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, good evening, everybody. My name is um Omoti from Dublin Highland, and um I work in a in an administrative team setting, and um I'm the CEO of the Four G Kings and Queen, based in Ireland and uh, all over the world. We are based in Nana and all over the world. We are a social group, like I said last week, and we are all about 4G, like I told you. And the 4G, the first one means God, and the second one means goals, your aspiration in life. And the third one may grow, where we encourage one another to network and collaborate as we are doing right now glow in the midst of looking for your uh, for our daily living we forget to look after our mental health and physical health so we encourage people to take the time off their regulars you know understand and look after their entire well-being so that is that about us and i have some of our um members both in nigeria and in highland joining us this evening just to contribute to our discussion so thank you. And if you want me to call them so that they can unmute and introduce themselves, if it's okay, can I go ahead, please? Please, Omoti, feel free to do that. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. And um, I um, I have Dr. Bola here. She's based in Ireland. And Dr. Bola, I know you might not want to show your face because of your, you know, you can just introduce yourself, please. You can unmute yourself, Dr. Bola. Is she there? I think she's there. Okay, I got yeah. oh, okay. obstetrician, um, a special team. Sorry, I'm just in the car now I'm on the road, so in case I'm not able to work. Yeah, welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks. Um, another person uh we talked this evening is um Fumilola Dada. She's one of us with 4G Kings and Queen. Very active lady. Thank you for joining us. And I, I like her vibe. She lives in Ireland. I've not even seen her. I've not met her. But you know, we will live very well on the platform. Very great woman. And I'm longing to see her very soon by this end of July. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Thank you for having me this evening. Thank you so much. My name is Fumilola Dada. I'm based in Dublin, Ireland, here too. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
And another one of four that is based in Ireland is um, some common affair. Um, I would like her to introduce herself anyway, because <laughs> she, she has she got lot lot about herself. So um, Sam, are you there? Yeah, uh, I didn't know you were going to come with me on this spotlight. How are you? Um, <laughs> sorry, my name is um, Sam Kamala Fair, and um, I'm based here in Highland. It's a pleasure to join every one of you to take part tonight, and um, I'm looking forward to learning something new. Thank you very much. Thank you. And another um, one of us in Ireland is uh, Comfort Olufemi. So, Comfort, if you are there, please, can you unmute yourself and introduce yourself, please? Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Comfort Olufemi, and I'm a direct support worker. I work with children um, services, children with intellectual disabilities, and it's a pleasure to be here tonight. Thank you. So I think um, the other queens, they are from Nigeria. They've introduced themselves last week. So I don't know. If you still want to say hi to us, you can go ahead, feel free. Okwe Yemi and Wurola. Hello, Hello. Sorry, can someone? Uh, hello? Hello, good evening. Wurola on the line, Lagos, Nigeria. Good to be here. Thank you. For me, you see me lie there, please. Okay, okay. Good, e good evening. My name is Okweyemi Vipekuli. I'm joining from Nigeria. I'm happy to be here this evening. Thank, Thank you. you. I think that's that for now because for me, is at work, so maybe she won't be able to talk. Okay, okay. Yeah. It's good to see her. I can see her. Good to see you. Welcome on board. Um, it looks like um Gizzi's hand has handed the reins over to me. So let's start with um the the background uh from last week. Omoti, do you want to just give us I don't know if you write, Giz writes, but if you want to give us a short um summary of what we discussed so that we bring everyone to board of where we're at, maybe maybe just one one, two minutes. Okay. Um, like last week we discussed Hello? about. Hello, sorry. Can you see our chat? There's someone sending a message. Joy. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, did you see that? Mm. Joy, oh, she's sending a message. Do you see? No, I haven't seen the message. Oh yes. Okay. She says, please, I can't hear you. Yeah, um, she can. Joy, what you might have to do is um, log out and come back in and join okay. with your audio. Okay. Yeah, okay. just try again trying. because it's it's not from us. It's definitely from your device. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Like last week, we were discussing about um social EU in Ireland, and uh, I mentioned about seven that um, most of us are facing here in Ireland. Is everything okay? Yes, please go on. Yeah. So we discussed about social EU within Highland, and um, which I believe most of the immigrants are facing on a regular basis. And uh, the first one I mentioned um, is an uh, accent barrier. Let's be honest, Irish are welcoming people, but it's no surprise that language top the list of EU facing immigrants in any country. You know, be not be able to communicate um, the accent, you know, you can't really go far from job to schooling. So we simply have to find your way around um, the accent. And the second one I mentioned um, is raising children and helping their sources in school as well. It's one of the biggest obstacles as a refugee and immigrant parent mm -hmm. to uh, having them to raise their children in a new unfamiliar culture. So parents are often find that their children are quick, quickly westernized, which may be at odds with their own culture. And the third one I mentioned also is um, about securing job, which is a big issue among immigrants. Why most of immigrants are happy to take whatever job is available when they first enter the country? 
Finding a job and slowly moving up the ladder is incredibly difficult for immigrants. You can find, you see, immigrants who are educated and who formerly had strong job back at home find it um, frustrating that they can't obtain the same kind of job, the professional kind of job that they do at home in a, in a foreign land. So employers typically prefer work experience within, you know, their, within their zone and um, before they can give you a job. So immigrants are easy victims for discrimination and exploitation in the workplace. Some employ um, employers recognize the sense of urgency and desperation among this group to keep their job. So they will have them to take the less desirable and even da dangerous roles. So that is one of the things yeah. we face here. And the fourth one I talk about also, I talk about securing I'm housing good. because I'm, um, I don't have to tell you that safe and affordable housing is very expensive. So most of us tend to live in a less privileged area because you know it's so expensive to get accommodation anyway. And the fifth one I talk about is a cultural um, barriers. Cultural barriers differences. However, many immigrants report that on arrival, it is a cultural difference that really make a big impression for them. And the sixth one I talk about as well is um, racism. This is a self feature of the immigrant experience across the world. Um, support services include social services, community, and peer group, along with a modern police force that has, that has strong diversity and anti racism policy, which are all available to help those facing issues of racism. But I just believe those are, are just in theory, not really in practical, you know. Yeah. So, and uh, the last one I, I will talk about is a disunity among us, which is very, very paramount because if we are not coming together, there's no way we can fight this um, social issue we are talking about. There's no way we can break through this um, nationality, you understand? So, this unity among us is just too, too is, a, is a big issue to us. Some, um, some of our friends, you might see, like, oh, this is my brother, you see their color, you might want to say hello to them, they, they will be like, they will snub you, you know? They don't want to associate with you, even if you are doing having some kind of group to come to have people to support you. It's so difficult. But when we call a uh, call party, we will always see all of us there. But when we are doing uh, something like um, a support group, community group, nobody wants to help you. So we don't know why it's like that, and that is what we are here today, just to break the limit. Thank you. Okay. Wow. Awesome. So sorry, I had to go offline for a bit. I had a bit of an emergency, but I'm back. Um, yeah. But I was listening and I heard everything that was being said. So thank you so much for that, Omoti. Um, I wanted to ask you, Yem, and there's something we talked about sharing. Um, do you have access to it at the moment? Um, keep talking. I will bring okay. it up. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, while while you, uh, the Omoti was talking about um. The, the six items that we yeah. listed out last last week yeah, yeah. and um, when you talked about and I just put in jobs then that's um, um, getting the jobs that mm -hmm. um, the jobs that we want or the jobs that we're in so if you were uh, um, I don't want to say banker because you don't volunteer in there if if we were work, working in how do we work in in some finance ways, finance Yes. So yes, 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 good. If we're working in finance and um, and then we come in to Shwanji, um, I know that there are ways that we can upskill. And I think that's the word that, that we use is upskilling. Yeah. Um, I, I, I know that a lot of doctors have to retake exams. And I believe there is a doctor here now. I don't know if... Um, um, you you were in Nigeria before coming here, but I know that there are doctors that have to re, re take exams that yep. uh, and probably do some more training that sure. comply with the, the 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 rules, regulations, the learnings that that are and the and the roles that are. And that you can then take up in the UK. It it's also with finance. It's also with social care. Um, we 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 uh, at one point in time we we're recruiting social social workers from the EU many years ago, and they still had to take on a lot of training. And what what we term it as is upskilling. So if you're coming in 
as someone in finance and you want to join, you know that the, the financial rules and regulations can be different from they are. We have international ones, but then we have national ones as well. So yes, if you're conversant with the international ones, but if you're not conversant with the national ones, then you need to upskill, you need to retrain, take on the, the, the exams, and then you're, you're complying and you're, you can then take jobs within here. So I, I, I urge a lot of people because it would be nice if we could just come, but in different countries, we have different rules, regulations and, and stuff. So um, one other thing I have found, and I know that works a lot well in, this, in the social care in, um, environment, is volunteering. If you want to have work experience, volunteer. Um, it might look like you're working for nothing for, for a bit, but most volunteer roles now will give you like um, transport, they would give you some sort of um, assistance. Yes, yeah. Um, but the good thing about that is that you have a CV that is saying that you have experience. And um, it has worked for quite a few people I, 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 um, and friends that I know personally that have volunteered. Um, and they're, they're sitting pretty in, in, in some very good chairs at the moment. So it might look like a sacrifice, but it, it's, um, it's a means to an end. So thank you, Judith. Please continue. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we, were, we are looking for something that we want to see if we can share. I don't know if you can. Um, the, the, right, and um, but there's something I really want to put out there, and I and I and I'm going to say this with every atom of respect um, possible. We need to move away from this narrative. Um, we know things are hard for us in our community, um, where we find ourselves. Okay, um, but I think you see it's all about mindset, um, and we've come from a place. We've come from 400 years ago. We don't need to go into the history. We know where we've come from. It's been a 400 year journey. We are still not 100% out of that journey. Um, then I remember last week I mentioned 1884. We still have remnants of what took place in 1884, still happening today. Um, we also said last week that, you know, we want to see the changes. And I know that in Ireland, you guys want to see change. And what is stopping the change is lack of unity. And I promise you, it is not just happening in Ireland. It is happening even here in London, you know, even as, you know, down to now. If you look at this picture here, a picture worth more than a thousand words, please ignore the, the, the spelling of worth, <laughs> but Hello. a picture worth more than a thousand words, okay? Um, this is this picture we are, this is, I'm going to put in a disclaimer because this is just a picture that was got from the internet. So Saffron Seca is putting in a disclaimer. It is not, uh, we do not own the rights to this picture. Okay, but what we can see is very poignant. You can see the different countries around that slab of meat, because that looks like a very, very nice piece of steak. Okay, and who is the steak? If you go to a restaurant and try to buy steak, a meal, in it we're looking at from maybe 50 pounds up and that's because steak is one of the most um you know very pricey foods you can get out there um you can see that everybody is sat at this dinner table wanting a piece of this steak and who is the steak it's africa but do you see any african country sitting around this steak no you don't and this is the same thing that happened in 1884 the scramble and partition for Africa, the same table that was sat at to discuss the fate and how they were going to divide Africa up for themselves. But guess what? The only people that were not at that table were the Africans. Hmm. Now, the worst thing that can happen, and this is happening in our offices, you know, promotions are going ahead. And promotions that are going ahead, some of us should have been at the top of those promotions. But when the promotions are being discussed, we are not at the table. We are not part of those discussions. What we get are what, we, what I like to refer to as reported speech. 
How can we change this? Yemi has given you an amazing, if you guys remember, David Cameron was the one that said, um, he brought back, there was, he, he coined it something about community work. And that's basically putting yourself out there in the community for nothing, going out and seeing how and where you can put yourself, even if it's an hour a day, I've done it. I work in thrift shops for an hour a day. This, thing, this does two things. It helps you to engage within your community. It helps with your CV. It helps with your skills. I remember last week, Omoti, or was it when we had a meeting and there was an, an uh, you, there was African day in Ireland, but none of you were you, part, was part of that African day. It was Meander that said it last week. Nobody was part of the African day. How do you have African day celebrated in a country, but not one African is present? So this picture, I mean, I, I hope it is a food for thought for all of us. But Saffron, we are very solution focused. We are result oriented. We can't continue crying about the problem. We need to focus on how we can move forward. You understand? And how do you move forward? We need to unite. Comfort, I see your hand is up and I'm coming to you as soon as I finish. We need to unite. You can't be crying about your situation and not uniting. Um, at Saffron, we are, I, I hope I'm okay to say this, Boss. We are planning seriously. We are storming Ireland. We will give you, oh, you are clapping. Thank you, Comfort. Thank you, Comfort. Um, we are storming Ireland and we don't play um, mm. because I think there's a lot of potential. I'm on your page. You guys are amazing. There's a lot of potential. And I think if we, if we all come together, um, you know, we, we will do amazing things. You've got some amazing men and you've got some amazing women in this group. Um, and it does need for us um, to come together as a community and, and make things happen. The jobs you're talking about that can be fixed. Um, you know, it's about training yourself, upskilling yourself. You know, what I can do today, I couldn't do 10 years ago. And that's because I just said, you know what? I've worked in finance. I worked in finance for 12 years. I wasn't a banker. So it's, it's about upskilling. It's about putting yourselves out there. And it's about removing them that I can't do, we can't do, they don't want us mindset. Mm -hmm. So um, please, if there's anybody on here that has anything they would like to, you know, share with us um, regarding what you feel is a way forward. We know there's disunity. We know we're not coming together. What we want to hear today is how can we bridge this gap? How can we move forward? How can we come together? What can we do as a community, as individuals to be that change that we want to see? I think comfort, are you there? I am, I am here. I was Go ahead, <laughs> thank you. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just um, taken aback and I'm, highly impressed and I'm motivated if I'm being honest because everything you said is quite spot on and yes we need to stop complaining about what we don't have and and we, we need to get out more and what really struck a call with me was when you said there was African day in Ireland and there was not a single African person there I for one I live in Ireland and I'm just hearing about African day for the first time right now so i didn't know about it so maybe there was lack of awareness and another thing is sometimes there's some things because i'm less than 40 i'm i'm the younger generation but there's some things we are we assume automatically that oh maybe it's for the older people because oh, when you see okay beautiful sorry that's my son it's okay so so like so we um uh, so really, I did. I would. I would assume some things are meant for the older generation. So that would, personally, that could hinder me from, you know, wanting to join in and everything. And then another thing is my work schedule as well. And I have. You can hear one of my child coming in right now. I have toddlers as well. I. I don't want to create any excuses, but I'm saying if we have more awareness. If we have things that would unite, not just the older people, the older generation, something to unite both the youth. I'm not, I'm not a teenager, but the teenagers, the youths, the, 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 the younger people, the older people, everybody together. I think that would be brilliant. 
Awesome. Well done. Thank you. Um, some some Kamala Fair, are you there? Um, I'm here, but I'm just going to listen. Yes. You want to listen? We need your contribution because I know you are you are into <laughs> many group in Ireland. Um. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll I'll just. Will you please give me a bit of time to make a contribution? I think I'll make a contribution to the next conversation. Okay. Is okay. that okay, please? And uh, for me, Lola Dada, please, could you come on board, please? Oh, uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, it's my first time here. Although I watched the video, I joined you last week. I was listening, was the first time joining. Um, thank you to my sis Omoti for inviting me here. Thank you so much. Uh, I was really impressed, um, really getting the, very motivated in the, all the starting of the program. So what I can see there in my own opinion is the, how we can change our own perspective based at, uh, in the community, at home, even at our working place. Changing our perspective in terms of my own understanding is that when something is coming up at working place, we sometimes, for me to, I will use myself as an example. Sometimes I might ignore it. I'm like, what exactly are they going to talk about that I'm not aware of? I've already know what they are talking about. We're supposed to be changing our perspective to be part of it. Once we contributed or sit down at the table, that's when we'll be able to be aware of what's going on in our working place. We might be like, oh, they are just, is the general one. I'm not a, Going, I, I, I'm not going to be part of it or not going to contribute. I already know what's going on. But we need to learn from what I listen tonight. I get motivated. It touched my heart and I picked something really good as a reminder that we should try and be part of and change our perspective. In the community, if you have a kid that in the community like the GAA football, even if you don't have the kids one day be part of what's going on on the community in your environment. I love that one. I'm very good at that. I'm part of the community member because anything that's going on, you'll be aware of uh, maybe there's a program going on. Even if you are not uh, available when they are distributing the leaflets, check your schedule, be part of it. That's what I'm always doing sometimes when I saw the leaflets to know and to be aware of what's going on in my community. I will check my schedule, be part of it. If it's, uh, it's sometimes they might be raising fundraising. If it's to go down there and help them in uh, doing the cleaning or baking. I'm not good at baking, but I will only tell them I will be part of it to set the table and do cleaning. Don't let me bake. I'm going to run the baking. So, but that's the only thing I am good at, even in the church. I began to change my perspective, my way of thinking from African mindset and adapt myself to where I'm living, where I'm based. So that is my own contribution. But the one I'm picking that remind me tonight that I get motivated is to go back out of my 30% contribution in working environment. When something is coming up, I have to increase and improve myself. So that's what I'm going to uh, thank you for making me part of tonight. Thank you. Let's see, let me see, is anybody there again? Um, is anybody from Ireland who want to talk, can jump on? Um, Dr. Bola, are you available? Um, sorry, if, if nobody is talking, I'll just make a quick contribution because okay. um, I might not be able to stay till the end. I have my Bible study. Good one. Later. Thank you. So I'll make a quick one, if that is okay. It's okay. Go, go ahead. Okay, thanks very much. Um, I was just listening to what the other sister said uh, about mindset, you know, changing your mindset uh, to be Western. Um, anyway, for me as a person, I, I don't see anything wrong in my mindset as an African woman. I take so much pride in being an African person and I don't see a reason why I have to change 
to be what I'm not. And the reason I say that is that coming from our culture and I'm coming from my own background as a Nigerian and someone that I see myself as part of the continent, African continent itself, I, I cherish the values that we carry, you know, in terms of the way we do things. And uh, my own upbringing in terms of uh, the little education that my parents were able to give to me, it's really influenced my life and I use it to guide the things that I do. So even coming to live in Highland, when I came here, I realized that it was so much important for me to instill the values which I, which I have, which I was brought up with. The, my value as, um, as a Yoruba, young Yoruba woman, growing up and bringing up a child, um, you know, coming all the way from Nigeria to live in, a, in an atmosphere that is different. So I instill those values in myself and I instill it in my kids. And I value them. And I don't feel there's any reason for me to change or to, to be something else because I feel the Africanity that is me is, uh, it has so much values uh, in it. Um, so I would say to mothers and I would say to uh, people that don't resent who you are in terms of the values that we carry. And that value has so much potential uh, and it's something we should be proud to, to share with our kids and to share in these environments with the people that we, we meet. Um, I, I notice sometimes when, you know, during my working days, when, when I'm working with, uh, within the community, which I still do, so I, I still do that. Uh, when I'm talking to other people, I, I tend to, um, you know, speak to them in form of, with the kind of respect that we would give to somebody older. And I do explain uh, to them that, look, if, if I'm back in my own country, this is the way I would have related to you. Because I felt that it was good to try, you know, to carry those values and let them see the way we behave. Um, so for our children as well, it's important because you don't, you know, they, they are going to grow up here. They, they're definitely going to learn the values and the culture in this community when they go to school. But you have to always remind them of, of your roots because that is the only way we can retain our culture and our values and we can instill it in our kids. So um, that, that is just my own take home that I hope people can take home and just um, think about it and retain it. Uh, let's carry it on. And uh, it is something we need to be proud of. Thank you. Um, thank you, Sam Kamalafe. Can I ask you a question, please? Oh, okay. um, when we're talking about the, this unity, what can you say about group in Highland people generally? Do they normally support one another? Um, first, um, we, you know, in everything, hmm. we have to think of ourselves. What, what role do we play in the community? as an individual, that is the first thing. Uh, before, we, before I answer the, do they support each other? Now, if you talk about in terms of um, community participation, yeah. if you're organizing an event that is led within our community and led by an African person, either you're from Nigeria, if, specifically our, our peak Nigerians, um, the, the, the level of engagement is quite different if it's a community activity. So community activities in terms of what we are doing now, the level of engagement is very low. If you're celebrating your birthday, you get a lot of people oh, sure. ready to come and, and uh, you know, be there. They, they are willing to put money to buy a ticket. So yeah, I mean ticket, I mean to buy a clothes. If you take a clothes, they are willing to buy you a gift. They want to spray you they can spend 20 euro minimum or 30 or whatever to, to contribute to what you're doing. But if you put an event together like you're doing today and you ask them to come and um, buy a ticket, even if it's 10 euro, they're like, ah, why should I? They don't want to do that. 
Exactly. If it is a if it's other African community like the Zimbabwe, the South Africans, mm. um, any other African community that is not Nigeria, they will they won't find it hard to buy their tickets and be part of it. Okay. So, and that is based on my own experience working in the community. Um, so, in terms of that, I would say their level of engagement is low. Even when your event is free, they still don't want to come. And if you really want them to come, you have to look as if you are their mercy, making them feel as if, because they don't see value in what you want to offer. Uh, and just like the sister said, the other sister said just now that um, she always feel that, uh, what, what are you going to tell me that I don't know? That mm. is the kind of attitude they have. <laughs> Because they just feel that what kilo shame you know that kind of attitude. Um, and they see it as a waste of time. Oh, I'm working, I'm doing this, uh, or they just don't want to be there. Um, I'm hoping that that will change. Uh, I, I think there's an element that is there's a little bit of change of attitude, but I, I don't know if that is just because um, of the COVID environment that we are. People are free, they are sitting at home, they just, okay, let me just pop in a little bit. So there's a little bit, you know, kind of a change of, but it's not as if there's anything significant about the change. So it, 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 I would say the engagement is very low, really very low. But look, we, we, we have to work with what we have. Um, but if you really want to make something out of yourself, um, it's better you target other communities. And then when our people see that you're doing well, then there will be a change in that. They might respond a different, but it's different in UK. I'm sure the people in UK will say that because in UK nope. there's so much engagement. No, nope. no, it's no, not. No, 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 sorry, no, 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 it's no, not no, different no. at all. <laughs> okay, I think we we looking from the outside. So, nope. yeah. Can I say something, please? I was just gonna just ask. I was just gonna ask you quickly. Um. You've pointed these out, and we and actually they're they're quite poignant. But what give us one um, way that you think that we can um, include more of our communities? Because you're right, um, we we still say the same thing here. It's the same story. Um, if you're having if, if someone's having a birthday party, the, the the place is full and and packed, and and they've spent so much money, and you have a a community engagement program, and you can't hardly get so many people the people that turn up are the people who probably don't need it because they already know the value they know what they want to take from there the people that don't turn up are the ones you really want to bring in so these people that we want to bring in how do you think that um we you, we might be able to do that so one. One, of, one of the ways is the example i give you that um uh that we you, you can you know make sure that when you're doing your events invite people that is not member of your community first. Then they might come because they want to feel they belong. So they will be there. Just, you know, that's the kind of mentality that we love. So don't, don't make them your, don't ever make them your, your key guest that they are the, without them, you won't do that event. Because if you wait for them, you will never do anything and you won't move. But when they see other people, when they see that you do things and they see other people, then there's, there's, there's tendency that they will make an effort to come. And the other thing you can do uh, as well, which you, you have to really humble yourself to be able to do that, you know, is to, to be at their doorstep. As in, what I mean that is that, you know, make sure you're calling them, you call them, you call them one by one, you know, and you have to really call them and be very yeah, good please. as much as you can. Yes. And then keep at it. <laughs> so this they, is, this they will. Is a, sorry to cut you this this is an issue that continues to to um resonate with nigerians the world over you know you you have a program and you're you've put out a filler and say you know um you're inviting all nigerians from here from there from um from the north of england from 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 southeast and until you, let me let me go back to the phrase i say if they didn't call me, what am I looking for there? You, you like, <laughs> just like what you said, you know, 
you're no, they're looking for you so to they, call they them want you to have this kind of a special yes. kind we need of to call. come away from that narrative yeah. um we, we we do need to call away from that when you put out the filler and and the program is for the community everybody is invited um i think maybe when we then put this film this these programs out we need to specify in there don't wait for us to call you nobody will call you everybody's invited and then we've learned also to put out some some carrots so then some, they will say you are how you're, you're very arrogant or you're too full of yourself exactly you do that they will say you're too full of yourself that's um, that's why we're looking at putting out the, the stick and the carrot so you put out some carrots what <laughs> benefits what are the benefits no, that they're going to the, get from from yeah. the, and attending um mm. those programs they know that there's benefit there, man. They just don't want to, they just don't see it that they need it because they feel they know more than you. It's just, just you just, in fact, you just them, name, you name it as uh, some common affair, they know more than you. The, 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 that is what, the way. To them, what what killer killer and jembe is I'm a waste sorry. of time. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm going to been trying to get in. Yeah, no I'm going to play devil's advocate for one minute, and I'm yeah. going to go ahead and say, can we, can we actually try and also see it from the other side? A lot of people have a lot of baggage that they're not willing to disclose to anybody, and I can't stress this enough. We we sometimes get carried away, and we feel like mental health has to do with one person is actually saying rubbish. They don't need to get to that period for you to know that they're actually struggling. Some people are only yeah. putting up a fact, they're only putting up a face, they're only put, typing up what they want you to see. You don't know exactly what people are going through. Some people are struggling to make ends meet. So we have single parents, we have people that they, they, they've lost a lot of people during this section, during, during COVID. How many people have we really gone out to and reached out to and say, how are you doing? I don't mean on the phone. When you ask somebody, how are you doing on phone? They may tell you exactly what you need to hear. When you sit down, when you're looking at somebody eyeball to eyeball, the, you, the person may actually cry and let you into their world. And when they let you into their world, it's up to you to now make sure that the information they've given to you, you keep it sacred. You don't tell any other person. And that's what most Nigerian people, older people do. They start to spread the God, they start to spread information that should have been kept as in confidential. It becomes a, a national mm -hmm. topic. They call this person and that person and that person. So I want to play devil's advocate. Yes, we need to attend to programs. We need to, we need to, we shouldn't wait for people to call us one-on-one. -on -one. But can we also realize that everybody has something they're going through? They may not be the person going through it. They may have children, they may have teenagers, they may have so many things that they have to go through. So please. Um, uh, look, it's good what you have said, sister. Yes, there's issues, there's people have issues. But in this in this area that we are talking about, it has nothing to do with their baggages. They go to parties. It has nothing to do with it. <laughs> it has nothing to do with their baggages. It's just an attitude that we've developed over the years mm -hmm. as a community. Now, I, I the, the people from the South African community, Zimbabwe community, um, Malawi community. Uh, they have everyone has a baggage but what we are saying is that these so-called people that you say that have a baggage if you call them for your party they will come there they will be there mm -hmm. it's just because they go for something that they feel is fun that they can mm -hmm. put on the best garments and be there rather than you the only people you will see in in events like this are people that as they have a kind of social status or uh, uh, attitude towards uh, community. And, and that those are the people you will see that they will be there. Or some people will come because they just like you as a person, they want to come and support you. If you ask many people when you do things, why do they come? They will say it's because of you. Even the ones that, but not because of the what they are coming to get at the event. That is what needs to change. It has not to be because of you. It has to be because of what they are coming to do in the event. And I will use myself as an example. Um, I'm not singing my trumpets, don't take it wrongly, but I'll use myself as an example. Uh, as you know, I, I, when this event now, I mean, and I had a lot of, I've been working since I finished work at six o'clock. I had, you know, I'm, I'm here with you guys and I have another program I'm doing and the person that invite me knows that but what I do is this because I feel that every opportunity 
we've lost uh Hello. Yeah. Oh. Well, that was just getting a bit exciting. Oh, okay, no. while we're Are you there? Whilst we're uh, waiting for to get know, back. Marcia. I understand the future oh, okay. as well. So that is what we're saying. It's just for people attitudes to change. Um, and it is important. The majority of people are not dealing with all these parties we are saying. Majority of them just have a different attitude. Uh, we can sympathize with people and I, you know, that have attitude towards, that have issues they are dealing with. But how do you know people have issues if you don't talk about it? And that's exactly. what we don't do. In our community, everybody, everything is from the devil. Uh, everything is from one shame, one shame. You, we never take responsibility for that. Things can, you know, be j just natural or things can be uh, own fault or destiny to happen in that way. Uh, we don't have to feel that everything, uh, there's somebody there in, in, in that world, you know, doing something to us. Mm. Um, yes. So I, I will I will stop there and I will thank say you. thank you for giving me the opportunity to oh, make it so much. And I hope this That's evening goes cool. well. Mm. Thank you. All. Thank you. I just want to go to Marcia because her hand's been up for quite a long time. Sorry, Marcia, go ahead. Are you still there? I have lost her. Okay. Yeah. She is. Uh, Marcia. I am. I right, am. I am. Can you hear me? I'm, yes, um, I'm on the move as well and I might be noisy. I agree to some extent to the last caller who said he wanted to be devil's advocate because that's one thing I was going to say one. Yeah. I agree with Yemi in terms of what can we do to help. But let's start at the grassroots. Let's start at the basics. So people not engaging. What are we doing to engage these people? I mean, before COVID, there was a school gate. Do you say hello to each other at the school gate? Are we starting those basic relationships of saying hello to someone? In order to build relationships, you've got to start somewhere. And if you just put on an event and say, okay, come on to my event. And as the caller before said, there could be an element of trust, you know? Yes, people have baggage. Yes, some people do. And they don't want to share it until they feel they can trust you. So I think starting at the basic and developing that basic hello at the school gate relationship, smiling the supermarket, that simple thing. Another thing, okay, other communities are having their events. Join in with them. Because you're Nigerian doesn't mean you can't join, you know, the South Africans in their events. Attend their events, be part of their events. And when other people see that you're in part of someone else's event, they will be empowered and motivated to join. So I think it's important that we, yes, look at people that might have other issues and they're afraid to share, you don't know their situation. And some people just think, you know, if I expose myself and be too vulnerable, I don't know where I can end up because I don't trust you. So start at the basics, I think, and develop very simple basic relationships before. And, you know, your children in school, are you part of the school PTA? Are you joining any sort of thing? You know, and being in another country and learning their culture is not giving away your culture it's actually enriching you because then you can share your culture with them and it, it, i think it's an ideal opportunity for you to build a relationship by showing other people what you've got you adapt and you still keep yours but sharing up yours is very very important so join the school pta you know when before covid did you take part in sports day you know you know, how are you going to form relationships with people of other culture and let them get them into your community without, first of all, learning about theirs? That's important. And when your other um, mates like Nigeria and other countries see that you're being that involved, they might be more empowered to be involved. I'm about to go into the tunnel, so I am going to end now. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I'll catch up when I come out. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bye -bye. Thank Bye -bye. you so much. I just want to quickly recognize um, our two directors from Safran Secap who have joined us. We have Adebola Ahmed, who is our resident social worker, and we also have Deborah. And Deborah is um, Safran Secap's um, director for um, children. Safeguarding and, children. Safeguarding children. children. Yeah. I always get her title wrong because it's so long. She's so intelligent. It's ridiculous. 
So I have Deborah on. Hi, <laughs> D. <laughs> and I have a Deborah on. Hi, ladies. Lovely to have you on. Good evening, I'm everyone. Good evening. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I, I have a lot to read. I hope you don't mind. Um, I'm going to read it out. It's from Sister Adebola who says, our culture is different from other cultures. It is how we are. We act strong. We want to make things look good. And that is how it has always been. We can only empower each other when we break this mindset and maybe change how we see each other. That would empower us more than anything else. Um, also, I think it is a Nigerian way, and I think you, what she was here, to, uh, Adebola is referring to what um, SOM consultancy was talking about, because that was when she typed it. He said, I think it is a Nigerian way. We always like to make things look right and never want to admit we have problems. I agree with the earlier speaker. People are coming from different perspectives. And as a Nigerian, we don't like to share our weakness with each other. Everyone wants to shine. So it's back to the wanting to shine and look good and look as if everything is fine. Um, and then she said, maybe the way we word the program can change. Rather than call it a program, can we call it a party or use a different word, a different word for it? Um, and I think Oluf Comfort Olufemi picked up on something that I think needs to be discussed. Um, from what she said, in as much as she's not a youth, a teenager, but she's obviously young. And I, I could hear a cry for, not a cry for help, a clarion call for the youth, for the young ones and the more advanced in age. And I'm not gonna call, she said the older ones, but you see age is, you know, a number. yourself feel, right? But it just sounds like there was a disconnect between the younger generation and the more advanced generation, and there should it be, right? Um, you, you, both generations stand to learn from each other. We learn from the young ones. Um, I'm not good at all this Snapchat and all these other things, and we need these things in our life these days. And that's where the younger generation come into it. Um, the older generation can teach the younger generation culture. They are away from our place of origin whether we like it or not we are not in Nigeria so when you're doing culture that culture will be in your home but if I send my child to your home I would do that with the notion that maybe when they get there they will see your children doubling for you and they'll come home and say mommy when we went to auntie Omotola's house we had to we had to prostrate and then what would they have done they would have learned the Yoruba culture even though they are Igbo children. Now, this is how we need to, you see that connect. So where um, SOM consultancy advised a way forward by us going into other people's cultures, invite the Ugandans, invite the Zimbabweans, invite, we had Meander on last week, invite yeah. the South Africans. We are all Africans. I told you we are all Africans first. Let's come together. So remember what I said, about the mindset, the mindset has to change because if the mindset doesn't change, we stay on the same conveyor belt on the journey on a road to nowhere. And um, I want to just welcome Ruth Omoroge, Bola Edo is on, Fumilayo Joy, Alero is on, Comfort We've Heard From You, Wura Ola, I think you're from Nigeria if I remember you from last week. So you are welcome. Um, Oluranti is on, Sandra is on, Josephine Obidibe is on. I know I saw you from last week, so that's amazing. And Fumi Lola Dada is on, Nene all the way from Nigeria. Hi Nene, good evening. Nene is on, I want to say hi to you as well. Okay, Omoti, I'm handing it back over to you so that you can, um, please guys, it's an open forum. Feel yeah. free to unmute and lend your voice. We do need to hear possible solutions and the way forward. Um, so over to you, Omuti. Oh, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, um, well spoken, all different points are well taken on board. Like we said, immigrant, um, most of immigrants worldwide, they feel invisible, yeah? So like Masia said, 
when you meet somebody, try to be engaged with them, start a conversation. And I guess the person might have some story to share with us. So be the first person to start a conversation, which is very, very important. So we have to cultivate the habit of starting the conversation in order to engage people. Like some said as well too, we need to reach out to other community, not necessarily to be Nigeria, not necessarily to be only Africa. It can, don't, don't let it be to, then, to be people that look uh, like you alone. The Irish, the Irish that national, anything they're doing in the community, we have to try our best to be there as well. And also, we have to remind our people, united we stand and divided we fall. Just like um, Olori said last week. So people can easily break you and crush you, throw you. We all know that unity gives us courage and it gives us power and strength. So if you if you want to go fast in, in life, you can go alone. But if you want to go far, go together because unity will give you that power and strength. So for example, when I started design for G Kings and Queen, and people were like, why, why did you include people in Nigeria? I said, I want to reach everybody worldwide. I don't want to limit to Ireland alone. Anybody on this earth, we can meet as a community online. You understand? People in Ireland, they were asking me why. And those people that asked me that, why did I include people in Nigeria? They are, they are, they are supportive and they are in Ireland. Most, most of my active members on 4G, they are in Nigeria, based in Nigeria. It is why people see what they are doing, that people in Ireland are supporting me. It's only few people in Ireland like that are very active on the platform. So coming back to what um, who said it that time, maybe is in some, that once they see you, that your engagement is improving with other people, they want to affiliate with you. Oh, that is what I did when I started 4G. I invited people all over the world, especially in Nigeria. Even in Ireland, I just choose some people that I know that they are ready to support me. They are ready to make it work until when others start seeing what we are doing, that they are joining us. So unity is very, very important. We need to let our people know that unity is important. It is needed for survival within majority because we are minority. So if we are united, we can crush all these majority people. You understand? So we all need to know that unity protects us from the evil doing. As people should help each other and together we should fight and face the evil and negative things. When we are together, we can stand. And when we get freedom for all kinds of these negativities, example in the workplace, you can easily survive when, you, when your team survives and me support you. So likewise, we as a majority, as, as a minority, let's support one another so that we can break this, um, all these negativities within our location. And secondly, unity help us to grow. Nothing can go alone. If you want to grow your family, you need your partner support. And if you want to achieve something good in life, you need to work together. So if you want to grow and want to go far, then you need to move together as a community. It doesn't matter that maybe this one is experienced than you. You have to reach out. Let me tell you something. When I when I uh, met um, Olori, Olori Yemi, I, I look at her profile, I check everything about her. I said, this woman, um, she always invites them um, grace for Nigerian minister. I said, will this woman have time for me? Honestly, I'm telling you. I look at it, but I am a tea. I will try something. I said, it will just, if she doesn't, uh, if she's not reaching out to me, I will move on. So when I look at her profile, I said, oh, the minister for Nigeria. And I said, with this woman, you know, will she accept my invitee? And she did. Even I, when, I, when I met her to 4G, I was like, hey, this woman is like, she looked like high class. That will she join us on 4G? Because even people that are not even up to what she's doing online in other group that I join, they want to look, look at you as if you are nobody. That is why I move on. Am I almost 
you know, and my, I, I, my job in me was just starting all this um, platform store, but I wouldn't like anybody to look down on me. I, I find myself with my own self-esteem. So when I wanted to join, I was so I was, I was afraid if she will join me, if she will relate with me. And I was so, so in fact, I was so surprised. You understand? Because I have some other group that they're not even up to what they are doing on Saffron. You understand? They are just looking for followers, they are just looking for somebody to serve them. And it shouldn't be like that. So you have to serve one and help one another and support one another, no matter how I or you are in life. So we need to grow together as a group. And thirdly, unity gives us courage. The same moment when you get support, you become brave and stand toward that injustice that we face. So you get the courage because you knew that you have people who stand behind you and support against any injustice. And I want us to know today that I can do something which you cannot do. And you can do something which I cannot do, but together we can do great things. Hmm. So our people have to know that. Now my, my submission before I go, we must work to remove this negative social construct of disunity among us by engagement with different community. It does not have to be all in Nigeria. Let it be all over the world, any national. You have to, in order to remove this uh, negative social concern of disunity, you have to engage. We need to engage, we really need it. Every other natural, every other community, we have to reach out to them. When we are doing something, we have to look out for all, all other African countries, invite them to your engagement. And secondly, we must work with non-Black that are against race and injustice, which is what I'm seeing, um, I'm seeing on the South front. Anytime they are doing, they bring different people from different natural, and I'm loving it. So we must, we must work with non-Black against race and injustice. And also, it should not be the people who look like you alone. OK? Yes. So we have to reach out. And now, we need an umbrella to be guided by principle to advocate for minority in workplace and practical community integration, not theory that we are talking about. Hmm. Practical community integration. We need it. These are African that we are talking about. No awareness. I didn't even hear about it. I like att att attending programs, community programs. I like it very well. But no awareness, no, but you understand. If I heard that about it, I'll create them and, and join them and I'll be affiliated with them. So now, um, Saffron, I want to ask you, how do we start? What are the resources? And, and I want you to show us the way, please. Thank you. OK. Can, I know you're going to join in um, this. Before you do, can I, can I just shout out that? Um, you know what i like what you've written down everything okay please can you whatsapp it to us because i i know you yeah yeah you are yeah you are shorthand to write t and you've gotten everything <laughs> i don't write i tried and i had to stop halfway because this woman was just hitting the mark she was hitting the buttons all everything please 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 everything you've written because we, I, I want us to put it out on 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 the on the page um, to as the outcomes that are coming out from from this meeting. Anyone else that has um, the, that has anything else to add, please, please, please um, drop it in the um, in the chats or um, just WhatsApp it to Omoti and I know that she will get it to to us. Um, there was something else that you you said, and um, about this. Uh, do you know what? It gave me sleepless nights, and it was about this this African day that there was no African at the table, and that was why we started with that um, that picture that that sad had Africa in the middle, and everyone else carving into it, and um, and none of us were at that table to make the decisions um when we started we i know that there's a there was a lady and i sorry i'm i'm very bad like this Giz will have captured your name um but she works in social care yeah, um, yeah. yeah. and i was also saying that the people who work within this environment they make policies they write policies that are supposed to help us but if we're not at that table then we cannot 
um, you know, impact or or inform those decisions. So they make decisions and policies that do not work for us because we have not added to those policies. Um, we need, like you said, um, Omosi, we need to start putting our noses in where they don't invite us. If you don't invite me, if I like what you're doing, well, light to light, you will see me inside there. I will bring my nose in because mm. I want to put my, I have a lot to say. I can talk for everybody sitting down here together. So I want to have my own voice um, in there. Um, one of the reasons why I studied health and social policy, because if you're writing policies and you're not looking at the group of people that will be using those policies, then they're useless to those set of people. And if our people are not at that table saying, uh, if you, this is how our culture is, or this is how our experiences is, or this is how we live, this is how, how we act, and, and those are taken into consideration into those policies, they would not work for you. And then we were the first to complain. I'm so sorry. We are the first to complain and say, ha, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not working, no. They didn't do this. They didn't do that. Who are the day? You are the day. We are the day. And unless we start to push ourselves in there, they don't invite you, invite yourself. The only places you will not see me coming is if you have a party, I didn't invite me. Because <laughs> I, I have rice in my house. <laughs> Thank you so but, much. <laughs> but but that, that, is, that is the fact. So I'm proposing, like you proposed, and I know you put some proposals in there. I'm proposing, uh, if they didn't call you, uh, let us to do our own African day and then invite everybody. Yes. You're making sense. That's let's all, let, let's all join hands together, and it doesn't have to be um, I, um, Ireland alone. It's all of us. You know that you will see us there. We will, we will yeah. be landing. Uh, just, put, so I'll just pick us up at the airport, but you know that we will be there. So, yes, let us have our own day. Let's have our own programs that we invite other people. The more um, the, the oct octopus hands, the more people that it will reach. And it doesn't have to be four people that decide that they want to be the, the voices of the If we have 10 of us sitting down, as long as we are coherent and we're agreeing, we will do a lot more. It's not about who owns it. Nobody owns it. Exactly. Okay. Hands up. Um, Madam, yeah. Madam Josephine wants to speak. So Josephine, please. yes, yes, yes. Please. Good evening. Yes, Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for everything that um, we've been doing since last week. Um, and we want the outcome. We want to see uh, positivity. We want to see good things uh, in our community where we are as a whole. Um, I just want to chip in something. Like we said that uh, apart from everything, when we have the good mindset in life, it will take us somewhere. We have a good mindset. Then there is something I want to say. Whether we are, in, we are the minority or we are the majority, anywhere we find ourselves, we are supposed to follow the law. When we follow the law, we do what uh, the law says in the country that we are. There we, uh, no matter how, how uh, they will see us and say maybe we are, before they can even judge us to be bad or treat us bad, once they, they do not see anything negative in our hands, it is, it is not so easy for them to now um, treat us bad because then they will have a problem. But well, if we follow the law, we follow exactly and we teach our, our children, every word that is related to us, we teach them to have this mindset, you follow the law, what they don't want, you don't do it, then definitely we have, we, we, we have started somewhere. It will take us to a good place. But we are, we are at work, um, what we are not supposed to do, we are doing it. Uh, we are at the school, the children are doing what they, they are not supposed to do is is, is is absolutely wrong. They can use those things to get at us any, any, anywhere at any time. That's what I want to say, apart from us having the unity among ourselves, apart from um, 
the mindset, we must teach each other and even our adults to, to do, to follow the law at all times. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. Thank you so much. Is please, if there is anybody else that has anything um, to say, um, Marcia. Hi. Sorry to before you I continue. Marcia, who is um, um, Safran's resident life coach, um, has put up. A, a, he has put something in the chat. Um, if anybody is looking to have um, any assistance um, with um, working on their mindset, she is a. She's a professionally trained life coach um so please feel free to reach out to Marcia um Marcia if you're still on please put your contact details in the chat so that anybody that would like to reach out to you can do so okay sorry for me Lola I think Deborah has her hand up but you were oh you, you go ahead for me Lola go oh, ahead. sorry That's cool. I just like uh, exactly what the other my sister that just finished talking now, I really respect her for that, uh, that uh, we should follow the law. I mean, if you are in the uh, working place or somewhere you went there to volunteer mm. and you follow the law, trust me, you will uh, last long there. If you are in a working place and you follow the law, you follow the rules, you are very cheerful, unity, progress, you will last long in that uh, working place. Even you, you'll be more notified and more respectful. So I really respect the, uh, my other sister that just finished talking that. That's why I'm just trying to back up what you said, that if you follow the law, you follow the rules in that working place, you will last long be before you know you'll be 10 years or 11 years if, because you will follow the law. They too will return the respect back to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. D, go ahead, please. I know you had your hand up. You like to unmute? Yes. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. Um, I, I'm sorry I came in late, um, but I have been able to pick up on one or two things. And um, um, with, with us as the Black community or Africans, wherever that African may be or come from, um, because we, I, I sometimes think that because we are sometimes unable to self-reflect, um, we default to things like religion or, and that ends up clouding our judgment. So what is it, what am I trying to say? We're trying to find ways for us to work together as a community. So it doesn't matter if you are from Kenya, it doesn't matter if you're from Gambia or you're from Nigeria or from Ghana or wherever you may be, as long as you're African, we really should be working together and we really should be that one community. So the question is what stops us from doing this and without being too um, historical and not be too complicated about it, there is um, a known thing, um, for example, when it comes to things like anxiety, um, there has been a link between, believe it or not, slavery and how African people experience anxiety, even right now. So there is, so the research linked whatever it was that happened during slavery times somehow has evolved and we as a people suffer a particular type of anxiety. I would like to propose that in the same manner that whatever it was that we have experienced as a people has meant that everybody wants to keep stuff to themselves. Everybody wants to look after themselves. I use Nigeria as an example. Many, many years of um, her citizen having to pretty much do things for themselves. There's no support from the government. There's no, so people are almost, um, uh, they default to me, 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 me. It's gotta be about me. I need to build my own empire. I need to make sure I am okay. So I think one of the first things we need to do is think about that, understand that, own that, and then decide how do I change that? 
because without that kind of reflection, we'll be organizing community uh, meetings, um, programs, and we'll still keep having the same numbers. And if you notice, unless people are going to get something out of it, people don't show up. We've used the example of people who are going to parties and it's because there's entertainment and they feel there's something to gain from going there. Now we need to think about our, so basically I'm saying we need to think about why it is these things don't work for us. And I think that um, if we're able to understand, it's kind of like saying, understand yourself and then decide what needs to be fixed. So if we understand ourselves as a community, then we understand where some of our difficulties are coming from, and then hopefully we can fix it. And I say that understanding that we've come from a long line of people who have probably had to um, fight for themselves, you know, fight for everything that you, you know, you own, that you worked for, that you achieved. And that may have impacted on our behavior. So we need to change our paradigm that we are a community. We are doing this together. It is for the greater good. Um, without me going on, that's just what I wanted to say. Thank you. <laughs> and um, Dick, um, Dick Nairut, can, can you unmute um, yourself, please? Yes, Sister Amoti. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, uh, I don't really have much to say because your, your submission this evening was really strong. And uh, all I can say is that, you know, we should always learn to support each other. And uh, I just want to use this opportunity as well to say thank you, Moti, for what you're doing. Thank you. Man. And not everybody has your grace anyway, because I remember very well when I started Sisters at Consult, years ago you were one of those strong people that i had behind me oh. you know probably i would have given up but you believe so much in the vision and you just kept pushing me you know encouraging me and even till date not being able to run activities for families because of covid mm -hmm. i'm actually saying that what we have done in the past made huge impact in lives of our children yeah. And I just want to say thank you for who you are. Thank God for the grace of God upon your lives. And thank God for what you stand for and what you represent. And by the special grace of God, we'll continue to do our best. Mm -hmm. And may Almighty God help us in this fight, mm -hmm. in this pursuit of unity. Mm -hmm. You know, thank you so much. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you, Dickness. Mm -hmm. God bless you. Oh, do we have any other questions? Um, I think anybody from Nigeria want to ship in? I think. Let me see. Hello, <clears throat> hello. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, uh, I first of all want to say I I should apologize. I'm apologizing for coming on late on the program and uh, i've had a lot from each and every one of you that have spoken and uh, it is quite educating and uh, refreshing to know that uh, we have people out there striving and fighting towards the unity and upliftment of africa as a country and nigeria as a nation it is a good thing that we are learning every day we learn on learn and on learn again so i want to appreciate everyone here for what they are doing and what they will be doing thus far i want to let us know that also that uh, about life is also a stereotype mind that uh, we feel we are minority sometimes it is a mindset sometimes when you strive like a speaker said the other time when you are in a place, no matter your, your, your disadvantage of being a minority, when you strive to be the best, strive to do the best, hmm. strive to achieve without cutting corners, hmm. doing the right thing and morally upright, I think the minority turns out to be the majority. You stand out from that minority, you become like a light, a shining light that illuminates upon every other person there and the issue of minority is also a mindset stuff which we we are from a community where it is survival of the fittest if you don't get you destroy 
which is a mindset we've, we've grown with, but uh, out there, like in the diaspora, there are other things you, you need to do to stand out. Mm -hmm. If you're in a career, stand out in your career. Yeah. If you're in a workplace, stand out in your workplace. Mm -hmm. If you are doing anything, stand out in what you are doing. They That's don't have the choice. They don't have a choice. They will accept mm -hmm. you. They don't have the choice. Mm -hmm. If you yes. are good in whatever they are doing, you. they don't have a choice. Thank you. So I also believe that uh, from what I've learned here, what I've had here, we have a brighter future as Africans and as Nigerians, that we are seeing far from what we used to know. Using this platform as a springboard to what we need to achieve, that uh, Life is not about seeing yourself as being disadvantaged. So I'm very grateful for listening to all of you and I've learned a lot today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wow. wow. Okay. I, I just want to say um, very quickly, um, and I'm putting it out there and I know I'm live on Facebook I'm hoping I'm live around the world. From today, we no longer class ourselves as the minority because guess what? We are not the minority. We ceased to be the minority so long ago. I know maybe the 30s, 40s, 50s, when a handful of our grandparents um, came here. But guess what? We are now the majority. We are no longer the minority. So you see that phrase, the B-A-M-E, that's not us. We know that's not us. We are doing amazing things around the world. Are they being highlighted? Not everything. But I'm telling you now, we are doing, and this is the African community, the Caribbean community, we are doing a lot of things. And I'm going to call out the Asian community. We are. So let's be really, really mindful. You see that word? Remove it from your dictionaries. It doesn't use it for other things, but never ever use it to describe us because Giz is not a minority, okay. never has been and never will be. And neither are any of our kings and queens on here. We mm -hmm. are going, we are moving, we are, we, we are already there, but we're still going. Yeah. Our children, can you imagine telling your child Jenny. that you are a minority? I know yeah. my child will not take it from me. Okay. So let's remove that language from our vocabulary. I just had to put that out there. And that is not a disrespect to anybody. It's been fed into us. When you fill your forms, you see the word there. I me, I cross it out. I scribble it out with my pen because I'm not answering it. Yeah. So I just wanted to say that and to say thank you um, to everybody that has come on. We're not ending. I'm ending at eight dot, guys, because kickoff is eight dot. I am ending at eight dot. This would go palava non. <laughs> but I, I really am so happy that we've done this. And Omoti asked us a question, what can we do? Yeah. Um, Saffron is very, very proactive. We, 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 the Zooms, we love our Zooms, but it doesn't end in the Zoom. It starts, no, it starts from the Zoom. Um, we're storming Island. And if they like to, if they're attending your parties, and they're not attending your programs, guess what? We will throw the biggest party and all of them will attend. And when they come to that party, we can engage in these serious discussions. It doesn't have to be a, a sit down um, call to action. We want a party, nobody dances more than Giz, ask Yemi. We will party and whilst we're partying, we will be having those serious conversations and let's find out what, why, how. Okay, so this is one of the things we need to get proactive. Our, our actions should not end in Zoom and everybody. Mm. Yeah, that's what we are, we are going to do. We will work it out with the kings and queens. Um, let, me, let me hand over to you. Um, lead us to the end so that I can go and take my seat. Don't run Ready? away. Stay there. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I'm just going to drop a word and, and then I'll leave it um, down to Omoti um, because this has been, you know, when we started, we did not know how it will pan out and it has just been 
really, really informative, interactive. We've had outcomes, we've had uh, almost his submission. Wow, I can't wait to to have that um, in, 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 in writing. Um, thank you to everybody who has joined us this in this past two weeks. And it's not the be damn the end. Uh, we we are going to stop at this, and then hopefully in in maybe another three, four, five weeks, come back again and re re revisit and see what progresses we've made at all, if there have been any, and um, and why. And also, if everyone can please drop in the chats for me, what um social interventions are there in ireland that are available targeted directly at um the african um african communities they you will see say bame we don't use it so we just use africa at the african communities but it would have bame communities what interventions do does um do you have around your your communities what interventions does ireland have that targets the black African communities. Please um, email it to us. The email um, address is there. It's Saffron Sacap, S A C A P, Saffron Sacap at gmail.com. Please drop them there because what we want to start to look at is um, when we come back, is that are they working for us? If they're not working for us, how do we then go back to them and say, these are out? Thank you very much. However, we believe that you need to review and start to add such and such and such into these programs so that they can be effective for the wider communities. Um, there's a lot of money that's going into all of this. Let's tap into the money um, that is supposed to be for our communities, but is not reaching our communities. It cannot be working for the minority. It is supposed to be working for the whole populace. So, that is my um, my contribution to that, and on that, I just want to say thank you to everyone. Giz, you say you say the the the, the closing is better than than I do. I just um, put in um, my, my my social policy and so safeguarding bits. But yes, this is where we want to take forward. So we have two assignments. Please use the email address. Send us as much information around interventions programs that you have. The ones that you have but are not also targeted at Black African communities, but you think that we should be tapping into, bring it to the table and, and let's take it take it out there. Secondly, um, I've also, I, I, I wrote something to Giz and I did say that um, in collaboration with 4G's Kings and Queens, let's have our own African day. Um, if you're interested in, in joining that working group, to carry all of this forward, please also just email or send a message to Omoti. And I know that um, she will collaborate um, with all your messages and suggestions and bring it to the table, but we are going to have a working group. So that's what's going on. So if it's only six of us that we start to discuss and plan, then it's six of us. If we have 12 of us, then it's 12 of us. But um, we don't just talk, we, we need to, to make good with all our discussions today. So Giz, okay. over, 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 over to you and then Giz. Um, to speak before I close, yeah? Oh yeah. So I just want to ask um, the subfront, you know, there's this immigration program you normally do. Sure. When When is the next one, please? Um, it's on the 17th. It's Saturday the 17th. All right. Because of Dickness, um, Dickness Root was asking me, so that's why I wanted to. Okay. okay. No problem. 17th of July, 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. What we will do is we will send the link to the 4 Thank King you. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, if that's you're great. Welcome. You're that's welcome. Good. Okay. All right. Um, and I want to just say honestly, thank you so much. Um, the 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 day we are talking about or the period, it's always nice to put time scales and time frames. It, we are looking at November for the Africa Day. So um, if you are interested, as Yemi said, to join that working group, mm -hmm. please, 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 we would need emails so that we can contact you. Joy, you have your hand up. Can I ask you to unmute, please? Yeah, I okay. just want to ask a question. Like, sure. Um, 
I just joined the group today, actually. All right. You're for, welcome. My friend invited me uh, for me. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. But the thing, like this group, what is the target? Please. The target. Sorry, sorry. Which group are you talking about? The four uh, and queens? Yes. What is the target? How much? The nation, like. Oh yeah, like I said, uh, for you kings and queen is um, a kind of a social group, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, we are all about 4G. The first one is God, that we honor all faith. It, it might be um, Muslim or Christianity, it doesn't matter to us, you understand? Yeah. So we honor God in, uh, in own whatever we do. And secondly, we talk about go, we invite um, our members to give us motivational topic if you are good at anything, just you know, give us the topic and we tap from there and we tap um, knowledge from whatever topic you share with us. And the third one is about go. After uh, after your, I'm mean, sorry, second one is go. After your go in life, we want you to grow it. You understand? We want you to yeah. network and collaborate with people so that you can grow whatever your plan in life. And the fourth G is glow. You know, I told you um, when I started that people. In Ireland, in diaspora, all over the world, in the in, in the midst of looking for their daily living, they forget yes. to look after the cell. So we talk about yeah. Mental, yeah, mental health, you understand, and physical health as well. So that's all about that. Just to be okay. that self-esteem, you understand, in life. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. So are you going to be joining the group then? Man, yeah, it's, it's interesting, but I'm just thinking, I'm thinking loud now, like with this kind of group, I notice we are more women. And um there are some of our children that they are in um, in all this um uh, residential care. Hmm. Okay. So are they part of what we are thinking? Is it part of our plan towards this? Our children there, you know, you understand what I'm trying to say. Even some adults, yeah. some fathers are there, like mothers. You understand? Is it part of what? Is it part of our mission, like? To, Honestly, to it's people? part of our mission okay. that I'm working toward. Because yes. you know, most of us we are in our late 40, 50. I'm 40, thinking. Yeah, 50. I am yes. really thinking ahead to have a social group force for us in future, whereby we can have okay. a community, our own event, five play where people can visit. So a part yes. of it, yeah, thank you. Okay, okay, thank you so much. Now yes. I, I'm in it. Oh, bless, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's amazing, that's amazing. I'm gonna throw this in really quickly based on what Joy has done. I love the fact that you asked because it's always important for you, don't just join groups for the sake of it. Exactly. Always get the mission, right? And Omoti has just said something that took me back to when I was maybe eight, 11, 12. I remember mother, God rest her soul, mm -hmm. in the in the 70s, they felt they were the women, the Igbo women who formed the first group of Igbo mothers in when well, we were in East London then, right? And it was mm. called Onye Marawanneye, who knows their brother yeah. or who knows their sister yeah, their um, yes now what this then did bearing in mind some of us had never ever been to nigeria in our lives so what this did when we come together you come together and you see and that's why everybody was uncle everybody was auntie okay sense of family you know and what is breaking my heart today is that we are talking about this unity within our community, which has never been us. It's not an African thing. We no. are all, we have always been about unity. In the African homes, in the Caribbean homes, we have always lived as one. And I think this has, we, we, we as individuals and as communities, this is what we need to fight to get back together, get our children back together. Thank God for the African music and the Caribbean music is bringing our children home. Our children are hearing this music and they're thinking, I hear my children singing the Nigerian songs, the African songs, you know, there has to be emphasis. But whilst there's emphasis on that, what must we also do? But 
cut, touched on it before she left. Yeah. Don't just stick to Al Parapo because you will not learn. No. We need to be worldwide. We need to be on every stage. We're not just going to be on an African stage or a Nigerian stage. You need exactly. to be on United Nations. They are formed of how many countries? We need to be on there. If you confine yourself to your little village, you will only learn what your village is teaching you. You will not yeah. learn what needs to be learned. To be learned yeah. Unless, yeah, we will widen our... Uh, that's why Saffron is storming Ireland mm -hmm. in November. Please, please join the working group because you know we are on a mission and we really, really want to. And Mr. Suleiman, our king, you were on last <laughs> week. You blew me away and you have Don't come back. To and how is my three-year-old little son? I hope it's you listen to him. Yes, ma'am, I'm, I'm, I do. Good. You <laughs> promised us last week that you were gonna listen to him and I, I know you did. Um, I did, yeah. And, 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 and I thank you for that. And I, I thank you for coming on today. Um, are you based in Ireland? No, I'm based in Nigeria, precisely. You're in Nigeria. Nigeria. No problem. Wow. Safran, we're coming to Nigeria, so we will see, uh, definitely link up. But yeah, yes, okay. thank you for coming on. Um, we thank you very much. More kings. We need to see a lot more kings coming on the Zoom, you know, so that okay, we can balance the scales. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, speak to your brothers, because if we have 20 of you on here, wow. you know oh, Nigeria wow. is going to be an amazing place. Exactly. It already yes, is, but we want it to be better. So thank I you, ma'am. I, wanted, I wanted to recognize you and I say thank you. Um, Omoti, um, God bless you. I, I, I have no words for you. I don't thank know you. how you do it. You're, you're, like, you're, like, you're like the wheels in saffron. You just keep going. You and Olori, you, you guys just keep going. And going. Thank, so, you. thank you. God bless you. Um, talk to, your, talk to, the, talk to your, your, your kings and queens. Let's get this working group started. Let it not end on, on the Zoom. We really need to move this forward. Yeah. Um, and see how we can we can we can link ourselves up and and bring the family saffron we have a mantra hashtag together we can because it's only when we come together that we can make the change and that we want to see yeah yeah so on this note guys i have three minutes so if anybody else has anything any contributions anything they wish to add before i bid you all good night and go and sit down in my sofa to make sure that England wins tonight. If we have nothing more left to say, I want to say it's been a pleasure. It's been amazing. Um, what I would ask is next week, we, we will be on again. And what we're looking for, we have been approached by um, an organization. Uh, we are working in collaboration with an organization who are doing an, a research project now, the research project is on an educational psychoanalytical um, approach to juju. Hmm. Voodoo. Yes, Debs, you heard right. Um, and they, what they want to do, they want to hear, they want to hear from us. Now, I, when I say this, I'm going to be very careful. I have never sat with a juju man. And I don't intend to, but what they would love to hear are people's personal experiences. I'm just throwing it out there. Think about it. Even if you don't want to talk about it next week, send us emails. We will really understand if I get it in an email. But this is to basically to help with the research and the educational um, groups that they are taking in order to find out how the juju is used with the trafficking of Nigerian girls. So it is a very serious um, 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 subject. Um, I, I did ask them whether they would want to go and sit with a juju man and, and interview him and they declined. So, <laughs> but yeah, if anybody has yeah, this, any- This would be interesting because this will help uh, those oh, girls yeah. that have been transported to Iki and all that. Yeah. So they have to go exactly. through from the trials and all. Yeah. You know. Exactly. Yeah. And to yes. be honest, these girls are in Italy. They're, they're the people that they're, 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 they're dealing with. So if yes. you please- Yes, serious if, if, bondage. Like. Yes. If anybody has anything that they can contribute in any way, shape or form, Saffron would be very, very, very grateful. Um, and how I want to look at it is, if you start this kind of process, 
it's the beginning of a process to put an end to these young ladies yes. having to go through all this kind of um you know devastating um um kind of um um, um situations sure, so yes yeah. yeah so i thought i'd throw that out there so thank you everybody it's been an amazing time um hope to see you all next week and even when it's not kings and queens, please don't go away. Always join us. Mm. We'd love to have you on board and to hear from you as well. And just be a part of what we're doing because you're now part of the family. Okay? That's so everybody, cool. please, guys, everybody on your knees now. Everyone get offline. Go and pray so that England wins. Yeah. Have a good evening. <laughs> <laughs> good it's been amazing. Don't worry. Yeah. Don't worry. Have a good evening, everybody. Oh, please stay safe. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Bye.